Hi, my students. Now we'll be looking at textbook page 142. Page, and after that, you can do page 76 of your workbook. So we are focusing on factorize. So previously, right, we focused on expansion of the special identity. Now we are doing the reverse to find out how to factorize it, which is to put in, put back the brackets. So this is some of the special identity that we have learned previously. So they are a square plus 2ab plus b square. This one is the perfect square. And they have the plus and the minus, um, the different ways. And then what next one will be the difference of two square. Which is your a square minus b square. And once you factorize it, it will be a plus b, a minus b. So using these three concepts over here, we are now using it to factorize it. Okay, so for question 1D, right, they say factorize this, this quadratic expression over here. So previously, right, we have deal with the multiplicative frame, which is which might be quite confusing for some of you as you need to like keep on finding out different ways and checking it. So for this special identity, right, it's like a shortcut. So you don't need to go through the long process of um checking out which one is the correct factors. So in this case, right, what do we do, right? We have to always check whether the numbers over here, the last and the third number, are they square numbers or not? So if they are square numbers, right, is high is there's a higher chances, right, that you don't need to that you can just use the special identity formula to factorize it. So let's check. So 36 e square, right? If I factorize it into the individual square root numbers, it will be 6e times 6e. While for 25f square, it will be 5f and 5f. And we need to check whether the middle number, right? Is it 2 times 6e times 5f? So in this case, right, 6e times 5f will give me 30ef. And 30ef times 2, right, is 60ef. So, oh, it's correct. So I can say that this expression over here, this is plus, so I put a plus in the middle, will be 6e plus 5f square when I factorize it. So this is my answer. Because in the middle term, right, it will always be the 2ab. So our a will be 36 will be 6e, our b will be 5f. So this is how I factorize it. Let's look at the next example, question 2d. So for question 2d, right, let's check whether the first term and the last term, are they square numbers or not? So I can write 25 as 5 times 5. And d square, right, if I square root it, it will be d times d. Oh, looks promising. For e square, right, 4, I know 4 is a square number because it's 2 times 2. And e is 2e times 2e. And the only thing that I left with is to check the middle number, right? Middle um, term, whether is it a uh, expression of minus 2ab or not, because it says minus over here. So a, if my a is 5d, if my b is 2e, 5d times 2e will be 5 times 2, 10. 10 times e times d is 10ed. So 10ed times negative 2, oh, it's negative 22de, which means I can write it. So, so that means when I factorize it, right, it will be a minus b bracket square. So 5d minus 2e square. This one will be my factorized answer. And let's look at the next one. There is a square plus ab plus 1 quarter b square. But in this case, right, now we have a fraction at the, at the end. So what do we do with it? Also the same thing, we need to find out what, whether this, whether after you square root this first and third term, right, whether we can get a nice answer or not. So when we square root a square, right, it will be a. So I know that a times a, right, give me a square. And for one quarter, right, I know that it's made up of half times, half times half. And my b square will be b times b. Then after that, I need to check whether the middle term, right, does it fit the 2ab? Because then it's a plus over here. So when I take a times half b, it will be half ab. And half ab times 2, it will be ab. That means this one will be the first one over here, a plus b squared. So it's a plus half b squared. This one will be my factorized answer. Let's look at 6a. For 6a, right, 
it's a slightly different. Now we have a numbers in front and the one with the alphabet square right is at the back. But it doesn't matter, it's still the same thing. So let's check whether the 100 can be right into square for it's a square number. So I know that 100 right is equals to 10 times 10. Okay, it's a square number. And for 1 over 25a square right, it's also, it's also a square number because it's made up of 1 over 5a times 1 over 5a. So normally for fractions, right, the trick is to look at the numbers, whether these numbers right, are, they, are they square numbers or not. So you need to be familiar with what are the common square numbers. Like for example, what is 2 square, 3 square, 4 square, 5 square, 6 square, 7 square, 8 square, 9 square, 10 square, 11 square, and 12 square. So if you're unsure of the square number, you can actually just punch in the calculator and just check. Okay, oh, yes. Or, or, or I'll give you a cheat code. You can take our square root. 1 over 25. Oh, 1 over 5. So this one is a square number. So when you square root a square number, right, it will give you a very nice number. This means that it's a square number. So you take out 1 over 5 times 1 over 5. So now let's check whether the middle number, negative 4a, is it a form of negative 2 times ab? So 10 times 1 over 5a, 10 times 1 over 5a, is 2a. So 2a times negative 2, right, will give me negative 4a. So it's all right, it's correct. So this means my a minus b will be 10 minus 1 over 5a squared. So this is my factorized answer. Now looking at the last question. So this question, last question over here, right, now you see a square, but there's only one number at the back. So normally this form, right, you will come to your mind immediately that this one must be the difference of two square. Because that's the only way we, that we can factorize it when we have any two terms. Or if they have some uh, common factor, you can actually pull it out. So for 4k square, right, it will be made up of 2k times 2k. And this 25, right, is made up of 5 times 5. So how do I write it, right? It will be in this format, a square minus b square. So it's a plus b times a minus b. So my a in this case, right, it will be 2k, and my b will be 5. So I just need to write it down, 2k plus 5. One is plus, the other one is minus. So this is how I write my factorized answer. So now you have go through all the example over here. You are ready to do your practice now, 60. So as I promise you, there will be a pun rewarded for watching this video entirely. So let me ask you, how to be the number one in this world? It's very simple. You need to be odd. You get it? Odd. O-D-D. -D. In order to be number one, you need to be a odd, because it's odd number. So which is quite true, because you need to be unique, that's why you can be number one. So how to be unique, right? Practice well and be familiarized with your own concepts. And I can assure you that your upcoming common test, no, your upcoming weighted assessment, right, you'll score with flying colors. So always be consistent with your own effort. Don't compare with anyone, compare with yourself. Thank you.